So here in Athens at Creature Comfort Brewery, I'm happy to have Chris Heron, the CEO of Creature Comforts. And Chris, you know, one of the cool things about being in a place like this, you get to sit down at a table, you get to enjoy some good beer. Uh, for the folks who are watching right now, a little jealous of us, tell the, of the folks what we're getting a chance to enjoy right now. Uh, right now we're drinking Classic City Lager. Classic City Lager is just a great um, sort of American style lager. Uh, really just easy drinking. Uh, we say it's good cold beer, yeah. uh, and so kind of perfect for, uh, for a football day. And no doubt, when it comes to Classic City Lager, obviously so many people like this because they love Athens. It kind of reminds them of Athens. And I'm imagining that a lot of people probably experienced a little bit about this and a uh, beer like this, and they learn more about Athens. What do you think about the best of Athens that's maybe represented by what Classic City Lager provides? Well, what's cool about making a lager is they're extremely, they're sort of a style that I think most Americans at least think of as being sort of easy because it's what the macro sort of brewers do, but it's really one of the hardest styles of beer to make. Uh, it's incredible attention to detail, focus. Uh, there's an incredible appreciation for sort of making something uh, seem simple that's not. And I think Athens actually is, is kind of similar to that in the glass and that it's a rather complex city, you know, yeah. um, but what most people's experience of Athens is coming here, having a good time. I think Athens pulls it off well and, uh, and makes it look easy to kind of host all these people. Sure. Um, but, it, but, it's a, but it's a rather difficult thing to do and so similar, similar to the beer in the glass. So let me back up here for a moment because obviously Creature Comforts and Classic City Lager is a beer that a lot of our audiences learn a lot about. It's one of the most popular craft beers, fast growing, um, among the best and biggest in America. And yet, when we say the word craft beer, I feel like I know what that is. Obviously, I would consider Creature Comforts a craft beer. And yet, your definition of what that means is also interesting to me. If I were to say craft beer and where Creature Comforts kind of fits into the craft beer story, sure. uh, a real movement taking place in our country, what do you think Creature Comforts fits into all that? And what does is, what is craft beer, the idea of that, mean to you? I mean, I think the idea of craft beer is this sort of independent, entrepreneurial spirit um, that of just showcasing our creativity in in a glass um, it's our way of being creative it it represents I think a lot of just American entrepreneurialism um, it's an incredible industry in that in my mind like you get this beautiful sort of conflux of um, the complexity of marketing and building brands and the fun that goes into that with what is essentially also manufacturing, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, and, and the complexity that goes in that. And you're, you're dealing with living organisms, so you've got science in here. We've got four full-time scientists. Uh, so for me, craft beer really is about the ability to, to just craft something out of, out of sort of thin air uh, and to do it in a way that we think it's important that it's, you know, that it's tied, that that word is tied to independent breweries, breweries that are um, that are able to focus more on their community that aren't sort of a part of the big macro beer movement. And, you know, that's, that's a big piece of it for us. And, of course, the juxtaposition of all that you just described is here in the facility where we are in Athens here where you do see the, the work being done to yeah. produce these beers, but you also see people relaxing, having a good time. It's a really interesting contrast, isn't it? Yeah. This is a working facility where beer is made. But it's also a place where people gather with friends and have a good time. And that's what, you know, our purpose as a brewery is to foster human connection. And so, you know, the idea that you can come in, you can meet your brewer, you can talk to the person who helped put that beer in the glass. Um, that's a unique experience. I think that's one, something that's really helped separate craft beer from other types of beer is just that people enjoy the idea, just like going to a restaurant and getting to meet the chef or getting yeah. to hear from the server about the dish that's sitting in front of you. You know, it's very different than just going out to the store and buying something and throw it in the oven. There's, there's a time and a place for both. Um, but, you know, we, we really are looking for the people that are interested in learning about the beer and, and kind of understanding the... Um, the kind of the beautiful, what we think is just the beauty inside the glass. Yeah, I've had a chance to get to know a lot of the folks on your team, and one of the things that is apparent about all of them is they really enjoy talking about beer. I, yeah. I imagine they enjoy the challenge of satisfying connoisseurs, people that are looking for a unique taste experience. As the CEO of Creature Comforts, how much fun is that for you to get a chance to go out there and take care of some people in a town like Athens, a state like Georgia, that these folks yeah. really love beer and they're looking for interesting tasting beers. You That's guys have incredible. obviously provided a lot of that. Uh, it's an incredible opportunity. You know, I mean, to, you know, one, to get to satisfy people's, you know, palates, to, to help them 
change their mind about beer. I mean, the, yeah. the best thing for me is, you know, when you meet someone who says, like, I don't like IPAs, mm -hmm. and, and then they have Tropicalia and they love it. Or, you know, when, you peep, when, we, when we ever meet someone who says, I don't like beer, like I always say, that's like akin to saying, I don't like food. <laughs> you know, it's like, beer can be so many incredible things that, you know, we really look at that as like a really fun challenge to sort of say, okay, hold on a second, so what do you like? Yeah. And, and then try to figure out a way to help navigate um, the world of beer for them and, and show them that what a lot of people's perception of beer is isn't as you know as broad as it could be and, uh, and so that's, that's that's a really fun part of the job. So a lot of the folks who are watching us right now are big football fans they think of Athens as a football town yeah. you have done a great work in kind of making this a beer town there as well you know when the idea of starting a craft brewery originated with you why Athens? I mean obviously it's, it's a great location but in specifics what was it about Athens that you thought, this is the place we need to make to call Creature Comforts home? Yeah, well, I'll go back to the beginning. I mean, one beer and football, like what a, not a natural <laughs> thing to go together, right? So sure. uh, I, I imagine some of the people watching also enjoy beer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, look, we always say, you know, as much as we chose Athens, we feel like Athens chose us. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, our story and origin story is, is rather unique in how, how sort of serendipity brought a group of us together. And um, we, I was looking at starting a brewery in Atlanta, uh, some of the other partners, one was working at, a, two of them were working at breweries in Atlanta. Uh, there is some, this space became available mm -hmm. and, and some people knew about it. A local chef well, knew of the, one of my business partners brewing. And so there were sort of all these pieces that came together. And Adam and David, who um, are the co-founders, they had gone to UGA. I grew up not far away down in, uh, in Stone Mountain and was familiar with Athens. And, and I think Athens, you know, when you started sort of putting the pieces together and saying, is this where we should, you know, is this where the breweries should go? Right. Um, yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense because it's, it's, it's a city known for sort of building things, mm -hmm. you know, quite frankly, you know, of, of finding those niche brands or bands and helping to grow them and develop them. Uh, it's incredibly supportive of the, of the businesses in the local community. And so, you know, when you, when you kind of, it, it doesn't seem like maybe the natural choice at first, which is why we probably don't have as many breweries as I'd like to see here. Uh, but once you really kind of put it together, it's, it's really a wonderful place to incubate brands. And so it's a great, great home for us. There's a word that we see a lot connected to Creature Comforts. If you're here at the facility, you'll see it. If you go online, you'll see it. That's the idea of curiosity. What is it about curiosity that fuels what you guys are doing at Creature Comforts, finding new beers, satisfying people with the beers they already love. How does curiosity play into that? Yeah, so one of our values here is Crave Curiosity, and it's the idea of sort of, you know, we want people to have the sensibility of adults, but the curiosity of children. And, um, and to, be, to be exploring the world. So for us, you know, if you're curious, right, that, that opens up the world uh, as, as an opportunity to learn from. And we, we think that if you're curious, that helps you uncover things you're passionate about. You know, if you're just asking questions, that gets you to something that you're passionate about. And once you find that passion, you know, we'd encourage people to bring it into their life, to, to pursue that passion. And once you do that, we think you're happier. And when you're happier, we say that's sort of when you're happy, you can really enjoy the creature comforts of life. And this brewery is actually just sort of the end of that journey for some of us. Um, the name Creature Comforts is just as much like internal facing as external. This is us being curious about the world, uncovering that we are passionate about beer, figuring out how to work it into our lives in some sort of way and being happy and then for us the way that you know a, a warm cup of coffee is someone's creature comfort or sure. you know a warm blanket out of the uh, out of, straight out of the dryer like for us coming to work this brewery it was our ultimate creature comfort it was sort of the culmination of a journey for us to get to come in and do what we love every day and, and that's kind of the goal now is how do we how do we turn this product and this environment and these experiences into something that others would look at and sort of say like this brewery is a creature comfort it's a place it's something that makes me feel happy it makes me feel good well in a lot of ways it's a perfect marriage because athens is obviously well known as an artistic city one of the great music scenes absolutely for, yeah. for, for many decades and you know even other forms of art really thrive here and I think many of us now appreciate beer as a form of art, the, the, the we brewers so. yeah. that, that, that make that so. So I would imagine that the energy that you feed off of from the other artistic endeavors going on really all around you and the streets yep. of Athens, I think only make it, I guess, more inspiring to come in here and, it is. and, and make beer. You know, college towns are just vibrant. You know, the life turns over here, you know, quickly. So it's always evolving, you know, and, and so I think being in an environment like that, having access to the University of Georgia, who we partner with in a lot of different ways, from working with the U Garden uh, to explore different flavors that we can use in some of our barrel-aged beers, to, um, to working with some of their science departments, to partnering with them on sustainability initiatives and through internships. Um, you know, there's just such this incredible wealth of resources, you know, both in sort of the 
you know, the, the educational world, but then also to your point, like working with local artists. I mean, if you look around here, our can designs, the art that's on the walls, the murals that are on the walls, all come from working with local artists. And so, you know, when you get to have, you know, when you get to surround yourself in an environment like that, you know, it, it brings out the best in you. You know, it pushes you to do more, to be more creative, to find new ways um, to essentially create beverages that the world may have never had before. Uh, Classic City Lager and Creature Comics has been partnering with us here at Dog Nation for a couple of weeks. I've enjoyed getting know, more, to know more about your company while we've been doing that. One of the things I've really been impressed with is the fact that another ideal that you guys seem to, to, to really value is the notion of being a good citizen here in the city of Athens beyond just taking care of the beer drinkers, but also yeah. being aware of maybe some of the problems that can exist below the surface. And if you just took a quick drive through Athens on game day, you might not notice, but you guys yeah. are living here 365 days a year. Tell us a little bit about some of the work that you've done there. I know through the Get Comfortable program and things yeah. like that, you guys are, are looking at some of the poverty in the Athens area and how you can really be one of the agents of change that addresses that. Tell us a, yeah. little, a, a little bit about how Creature Comforts work in that regard. Yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, we absolutely believe that you know, good companies are good neighbors. Um, we, one of the things that we say is that we, you know, we hope that people would say they're glad Creature Comforts is here. And, um, and so we work really hard to make sure that that's true. And, and when we got here, we, community was a pillar. We always sort of knew we wanted to be involved or we would consider ourselves a purpose-driven business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that purpose being beyond profits, we look at planet people, um, as well as you know, certainly profits help drive the engine to allow you to do more investment. Mm -hmm. uh, and from a strategic standpoint, we want to be both a growing company, but also a great company. And that great company is around looking around us and seeing how we can make a difference. And so uh, poverty is one of the main things. Athens has a very high poverty rate. Uh, it's still a wonderful community, but, sure. but it's not equal for everybody. Sure. Uh, and so what we've looked at and said is we certainly don't know how to solve the issues. We don't even always know what the issues are. And so we created programs like Get Comfortable uh, that actually lean into a series of advisors. We, we lean into a series of community experts to say what are the most pressing issues of our community. Poverty came up as one. Then we say, okay, who are the organizations doing the most pressing work? against these issues and we do an RFP they submit and then what we've done is sort of try to shine a flashlight and just say hey here's the issues here's the organizations and we created a fund called get comfortable and now there's 60 plus businesses in Athens that all pour money into that who all sort of said we have a heart for our community but we you know there's 200 plus nonprofits there's a, you know like any community there's a lot of issues we're not quite sure and we, we sort of say we want to be as dispassionate as the data when it comes to get comfortable it's not my cause it's not Adam David Katie this is, you know, this is our community's cause. This is what the data tells us our community needs most. And so that's about how do we get the community to survive better. And then we have some others that are a little, uh, little more fun and, and some that are more whimsical, something like Get Artistic, which supports the local arts community. Sure. You know, we believe that that's what thriving communities have or good arts communities. And so if we can create a thriving arts community that creates place attachment, the more people are attached to their environment, the more get involved in solving the problems, the more they get involved in the problem, the problems, the less problems there are, and, and there's more money to go into the arts because people don't tend to buy arts unless they're in a situation where they you know have some sort of base and so we we kind of look at it as this circle of you know survive and thrive like how do we help the community survive and then how do we help it thrive so I want to talk more about beer before we're done including the classic city lager that we're enjoying right now I do want to mention the business before we get there because you guys are engaging in an exciting chapter right now as we said before creature comforts very connected to the city of Athens is one of the real yeah landmark spots that people like to visit when they are here. They take some beer home, they enjoy some beer while they're here. Absolutely. But you guys also have an expansion you're working on heading out towards Los Angeles. Yes. That's a fun thing to think about, and I'm sure a daunting task. What's it like going out west? And yeah. I guess, how does something like that come to be? Yeah, so the natural progression, right? Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Athens, Georgia to LA. Uh, you know, it's very similar to how we felt like Athens found us. We kind of feel like the same thing happened in Los Angeles. It's a, a really, really cool story. I don't know how much time we've got to tell it all, but much you know, it you really want. starts, um, LA starts in sort of two different paths. One was us trying to think of where do we go next as a brand? What, mm -hmm. what are the next you know, paths for growth for us? And one of those was around we wanted to plant breweries. And we had done sort of statistical work to say what cities might make sense where we thought that it would go well. And LA did happen to come out in, in the top three position on that list. Uh, while we were looking at that, we also were going out there for a number of festivals and conferences. Okay. We were brewing collaborations with a number of breweries, and we just kind of found ourselves in LA a lot. We have some really great brewery friends out there who were coming out here to visit, and then we were going out there. And then our movie ended up in this, uh, this little movie called Avengers Endgame. <laughs> 
And Joe Russo, the director of that, had gotten involved with, um, and, and the staff had really taken a liking to Tropicalia in mm -hmm. particular, but our beers, and, and there was this wonderful opportunity to, to get the beer into the movie, sure. uh, which, which they did. And, uh, and then through that, he had a location in LA where they're, near where their studio sort of set up is. Uh, and he just sort of said, hey, you know, I know you guys are looking at other markets. We are aware of this spot that we think would be incredible for a brewery and happens to be sort of right underneath his office. Uh, and so he's like, what do you guys think? And so sort of through, again, this sort of serendipitous thing where, you know, I don't think if you had asked us when we opened, do you think your next spot would be Los Angeles? Mm -hmm. We would have never, ever imagined that to be the case. Uh, but, you know, this whole journey for us has been about this sort of curious endeavor and just allowing life to take us where it, where it seems to be taking us and it just has felt right. Um, it, it's definitely daunting, you know, trying to build a brewery on the other coast uh, is gonna be new. Trying to, to build a brand here in Athens, we were the like second or you know, really second major brewery sort of in the market at the time. Um, there will be like the 800th brewery, you know, to come. Sure. Uh, so very different in, turn, in, in, in that way, but it's also like, we love a challenge. We love the idea of make it better. It's a value of ours. So we're gonna learn a lot about how to, how to operate. It's a community that also needs help in a lot of different ways and, and looking forward to going and just figuring out how to be a part of it. So I gotta ask you, when you saw your beer on the big screen, I remember the social media buzz. Avengers was obviously the biggest movie on the planet for, for quite some time. So yeah. many Georgia fans, people who love Athens, felt like they were on the big screen when they saw their favorite <laughs> Athens beer, Creature Comforts there on the big screen. What was that like? How much fun was that? I'm sure you were getting calls was, from people uh, you hadn't heard from in a long time. It was pretty incredible. So we actually were really fortunate. Um, Adam, David, and I actually got to go out there for the premiere. So we got to see it a couple days ahead of the world. and so. When we came back, we knew sort of it was a much bigger role than we expected it to be. We assumed it was going to be kind of hiding in the corner. Um, we didn't know that it would sort of be like the beer that they inspired Thor to come to the ship. And then I like to say he was in a bad place until he started drinking chop and then he became a superhero go. again. There you go. Uh, and, and to see that sort of journey and for it to have such a significant role essentially and be so prominent in you know, one of the most iconic films ever. Oh, yeah. um, when we got back here, we ended up renting out two theaters to take all of our staff. And so we brought all of our staff, everybody dropped, dressed in all their, their gear. And uh, that was just one of those incredible moments. You know, there are times when you own a business that are difficult and there are times that are just so memorable. And that's just gonna be one of those moments that I think we'll look back on fondly for forever and sort of even the good old days when we could still you know fit everyone into two theaters you know no you did uh, back then right but um but but it is just um it was a really wonderful moment one of those and to get to share it you know if my wife was there and and get to see those times with my kids um and it, it's just been uh it's been really awesome so before we're done let's talk some beer because you're obviously a huge advocate of the craft beer world and you've introduced so much of our audience to classic city lager and we've heard great feedback from people who may have tried classic city lager for the first time some of our people have been drinking it for years, other sure. people kind of getting to know. So what's next? For someone who's tried uh, Creature Comforts, they've tried Classic City yeah. Lager, they love the way it tastes. It's different for them. It, it's, yeah. it's a fun taste. Where would you say they should go next on their exploration? Their own curiosity, if you will, yeah. in, their, uh, in their pursuit of beer. You know, I, I'd say like, you know, look to flavors that you enjoy, you know, outside of even beer, right? So if you like sort of more tropical leaning kind of flavors, a beer like Tropicalia mm -hmm. is gonna is open your mind up to, you know, grapefruit and, and just sort of more tropical fruit notes. If you're more of maybe a wine drinker and you sort of enjoy, or even like apple-y and cider kind of characters, mm -hmm. uh, Athena, which has is like gently tart the way lemonade is, like okay. that's a wonderful beer that really blows people's mind. That's definitely a beer that people who say, I don't like beer, they go to that and they really enjoy it. If you love this, you know, Bebo's a, nat a natural, it's a pilsner. Yeah. So you're taking sort of this similar style, but you're adding a little bit more hop character to it. Um, and that's kind of a nice step up into craft of like, okay, you know, hops are often thought of as a big part of what craft beer is about. Um, we really work with a lot of our local, you know, not local, but growers mm -hmm. in America. Um, craft beer is, you know, created and brought life to hop varieties. and so. You know, I think that's, um, you know, that's another sort of journey. So we, at Creature, you know, our mission is to build an industry respect brewery that helps people navigate the complex and beautiful world of beer. And so uh, we tell you, if you like the beer, come to the brewery and let well, some of our wonderful staff, you know, guide you on a journey. Um, we've got all different kinds of stuff. We've got a wonderful barrel aging program. 
that is totally unique, uh, 750 milliliter bottles or 500 milliliter that will really change people's perspective on, on what beer can be. I mean, these are aging for a year plus in wine barrels or stouts that are aging in bourbon barrels that really, um, you know, I, I love getting to take people on this journey to where they're just like, I had no idea that some beers could take two years to make. You yeah, know? that's great. That's, uh, that's really unique. Well, Chris Heron, uh, thank you so much for having us here today. If it's okay with you, we'll stop talking about beer and actually enjoy a little bit of beer. That's, that that sound? sounds great to me. Thanks yeah, for having us here today. Appreciate it. Thank you.